What's up everyone, this is Marsman here, and welcome to Marsman Gaming. In this video, I gave my review of Elden Ring. Just like my other game reviews, I like to let the dust settle before I give my final verdict on any game that I play. Does Elden Ring really live up to the hype? Why is this game the hottest in the market right now? Is Elden Ring really running away with the game of the year title? I answer these questions and more, so please stick around to the end. This is Marsman Gaming. Ever since Elden Ring was released, the hype of the game was out of this world. I mean, From Software had always released badass games that were extremely intense with outrageous bosses like Dark Souls, Demon Souls, Sekiro, and Bloodborne. So generally, what I expected was we were going to get a crazy ass game when Elden Ring was finally released. This game was in development for eight years, and there's a lot of anxiety that this game could possibly be a dud because of the fact we really weren't hearing a lot from it and because there were some mishaps or some issues when it came to the development. However, all of those fears were quickly gone when we finally got a glimpse of some of the gameplay. I had already pre-ordered the game and with the full expectation that it would be intense and boy did it live up to that head on. When making my review, I like to break the game down into the positives, the negatives, and then I give my final verdict on the overall game. So let's start with the positives. I first want to talk about the gameplay. Generally, the gameplay of Elder Ring is pretty straightforward. You're going to slice, you're going to dodge roll, you're going to cast some spells, and then you're going to dodge roll again. Even though this is a pretty basic function of how the game works, it is still very diverse in the way that it's put together. What makes the combat so diverse and fun is that there are so many different weapon types in this game that make it so fun to play through. There's a total of 14 different types of weapons that you can use in Elden Ring. And within each of those types, there's going to be several subgroups that you can use. And overall, there is a total of 371 weapons in the game that we know of so far and this is before they start adding dlc content with this many weapons in the game it allows for the player to play any way they want to and to wield any type of weapon that they pick their hands on you can go one way of carrying the basic sword and shield and go through it like a classic Castlevania style of combat, or you can go straight on Gandalf and rock a long sword and staff and go full on mage on everyone's ass, or you can walk around with a giant hammer and just start beating everyone to a pulp. Sometimes gameplay being simple is the best way. Secondly, I want to talk about customization. Building upon the last segment, the customization in this game is extremely impressive. Firstly, you can make your character look any way you want them to. I seen some pretty outrageous stuff where some people were making characters based on some famous TV and drama series like for example Jon Snow and that could range from Jon Snow all the way to Shrek and it was pretty impressive. One of the other really cool parts of the game is that you start out by picking a specific class. Basically there's a total of 10 classes you can pick from the game and each class has their own specific traits and strengths and weaknesses. Av amongst these 10 classes you have Vagabond, Warrior, Hero, Bandit, Astrologer, Prophet, Samurai, Prisoner, Confessor, and the fun wretch. My favorite part about these classes is that they each have their own specific play style, but you can always adapt and change it up as time progresses. For example, my class as the samurai comes with a very strong sense of endurance and strength right out the gate, while other people might like magic and would rather pick astrologer or confessor to begin with. My favorite part about this is that basically you have the choice to pick who you want to play as, and then you can always adapt and adjust your traits as you play through the game. This creates for a lot of replayability because now you can try one method of playing and then drastically change it in your second go around. The amount of armors that are in this game to customize your character is also quite impressive. They literally have so many different types of customizations that you can make your character look badass or you can make them look goofy and they still are going to be able to compete against any type of boss out there. Nextly, I want to talk about the map and the environment. One of the other biggest positives about this game is the massive scale of the map. Generally, some people would look at the fact that this map, if you're looking at the actual scale and size, would be about 79 square kilometers, which is basically the equivalent of looking at maps that come from Skyrim or Breath of the Wild. But what's very interesting about the map is that there are so many different types of things you can find, as well as different biomes that are present. 
you're going to see some snowy peaks you're going to see some swamps you're going to see some desert like areas and you're obviously you're going to see some greenery the fact that it's very diverse gives elven ring a big knock on the advantage board because a lot of open worlds struggle with having diverse environments but elder ring really hits it right on the head but as i mentioned before the best part about any type of environment in an open world game is the fact that there is so much that you can do here there's so much things to explore there's so much things that you can find and that is what makes the map so impressive open world games usually have the same issue finding that nice combination between what the size of the map is along with doing things within that map and you can have one perspective where horizon forbidden west is going to give you kind of a difficulty to keep things fresh with having all of the similar like activities and then you're going to have things like halo infinite where you'll fall into a similar problem where the map may not be as big but some of the activities may become redundant over time elden ring doesn't have that problem most of the encounters that you're going to find here are going to be slightly distinct depending on who you're fighting or which area you're in you definitely have to applaud from software with finding that perfect match between the size of the map and things to do in it and that gives them a lot of points in my board. Next, let's talk about the bosses and the missions here. The most known thing about From Software games is the epic boss battles that are constantly present. Bosses in this game are meant to get you extremely angry because of the fact that one, they're extremely difficult, and two, there's a very slim margin of error here. What elevates this fear of losing is the fact that if you get killed, you will lose all of your runes, which are used to upgrade your character to make yourself stronger. So it just increases the intensity of these boss battles. I personally have played Sekiro before, so I kind of expected this much to happen. But for a lot of new players out there, this was quite a culture shock. And boy, it was quite interesting to see these new players play for the first time. What I really like about these bosses is that each one of them has specific traits that you have to try to take advantage of depending on the situation. For example, you can see some bosses are going to have weaknesses to certain types of weapons or certain types of grease and you need to prepare yourself for the battle going forward what's also interesting is that each one of these bosses has a very distinct storyline or lore about them that makes them interesting my opinion one of my favorite bosses is the general radon radon is one of my favorites because he has such a cool backstory and the boss fight was one of the most intense i've ever played alongside these bosses you're given many tasks to be completed like delivering items to certain npcs that expand the lore of the game the biggest critique of this game is the fact that there is a lack of a difficulty setting that may isolate new players that may not want to just get good the one thing i'll say to address this concern is that that's what makes the game extremely interesting difficulty of the game itself is what makes it appealing to the community of elden ring what i'll say that from software does to address this criticism is that they have a lot more support from npcs locally as well as people from online play where basically you will have a lot of help through summonings to get you through bosses that may be extremely difficult and let me tell you the elden ring community is a very very dedicated bunch they will help anyone that is trying to play this game i will say that one of the biggest positives that i see about this community is that they are always trying to help others me personally there are times where i was streaming the elden ring when i was playing with my crew and i had people either saying to me hey i can help you out with this part or asking vice versa hey can you guys help me out with this section and it was a blast interacting with the elder Ring community they are a dedicated bunch and they are a fun group to play with the best part of the game is finding some friends to play elder ring with i had the most fun playing with the marsman crew and we were streaming this game several times and it was a blast every time now with the positives being as good as they are we do need to address the negatives that elden ring has i'll start off first with the story the story of this game has some mixed reviews the basic premise of the game is that you are in the land between where the elden ring was broken into several pieces and controlled by demigods that control their own factions each of them is trying to take over certain parts of the land and try to lead it in their own way one of the most important aspects of the game is the ur tree the Ur Tree is where all the souls go when they die, and whoever can control the Ur Tree has immense power. Your ultimate goal of the game is to 
defeat the demigods and gain control of the pieces so that you can face the elven lord and control the entire area to do what you want with it now generally that's the technically the quick version of the story because there is so much background lore that goes into this game my negative is mainly the fact that most of the story is not really explained at all you need to really investigate every item you pick up to understand the full story the story necessarily isn't negative but i feel that this game could have done a better job at explaining some of the things that make it a lot clearer for people and i get it from software never did this for their games before they never fully explained the lore right to your face and some people are going to say well, do you want a Horizon Forbidden West explanation where everything is told right to you outright and it gets to this long cutscenes? Elden Ring is better not with these cutscenes, but you can definitely make a compromise and have some ways to explain some of these things. Like, if you were to investigate some of these demigods, the backgrounds of them, you would be like, wow, this is awesome. I wish they had more cutscenes to show these things. Like, for example, General Radon was a top-level general that was looking for a worthy opponent to face because he was driven into madness, and I just found this to be so cool. But you never have a cutscene to explain this fully. There's going to be little cutscenes that give you some glimpses into this, but not enough to really explain the full aspects of the story that make it beneficial to those who aren't really investigating all these items who are brand new to the game. I would also say one of the key things that From Software can do is try to guide you in the right direction not telling you to say hey give me an entire heads up display with markers all over the map and and all of a sudden it gets too cluttered but i would like to see something like a journal to tell me these are the missions that you've accomplished and these are some possible things that you have done already and knowing where the npcs were the biggest problem i had was that npcs would say something really important and that they're heading somewhere and all of a sudden you have to try to remember from 10 hours ago where did they say they were going because now you're kind of stuck you want to continue that side mission but crap i played that part like 10 hours ago how am i going to remember exactly where the npc was and that is something that not only me but a lot of other people had said they had issues with lastly let's talk about the multiplayer i really have a lot of fun when playing multiplayer with the marsman crew i understand that from software meant for this game not to be a multiplayer game but to be a single player story game where multiplayer is just a side aspect of it and if you compare this to a lot of other from software games this is the most multiplayer included game in the entire series it's not meant for players to rely on multiplayer but it's good to have it as a way of helping them get through the story however just to get to the multiplayer component is one of the most tedious and annoying things to go through for example to get to the multiplayer and to have your friends join your lobby you have to put down the medallion you have to put down the golden finger you have to make sure that you're in the same multiplayer code online and then hopefully if your teammate's finger is shown on your screen you can summon them and sometimes it doesn't even work and what's more crazy is you can't summon them in most of the areas of the map only in certain areas you can do it my opinion you can rectify all this with a quite an easy process have a lobby invite your friends join your lobby and you're good to go this is year 2020 you can easily do this and it doesn't have to be as annoying as this is. Now, granted, I don't think that this is going to be a game breaker for anyone, but I just think this is a tedious process that could be fixed or maybe just adjusted to make it a lot easier. I feel like multiplayer is such a fun aspect to have to a game. Not saying you make the game easier, don't get me wrong, but I think you can have multiplayer included in this game and make it so much simpler, way more fun, so that everyone can enjoy it. I can tell you from complete honesty, I had more fun playing this game with my friends with my family than i had playing alone and now granted i know i'm one person but i feel like having the community together is probably more of a better aspect than just playing by yourself and i always enjoyed talking about the game and talking about experiences and that is all included with multiplayer so when it comes to my final verdict i think there's a lot of things you can go with with this game the game has been so hyped since its release and honestly i've been very happy with my purchase of this game the gameplay is smooth easy to pick up and straight up epic customizations are so diverse and you can create your character to be any way you want them to be this game throws you into a massive map with so much to do and explore that you can be lost for hours and not realize that you racked up 80 plus hours total for a game bosses game are so damn epic and they have truly reached the level of dark souls level of badass the story has great potential 
but it can be very confusing to those that aren't willing to put the work in to investigate or learn more about the lore through item discovery. Only they gave you a journal to explain some more of these details in order for people to just read on that rather than just read on all these random items they found. Multiplayer was a great adjustment for the game, giving people a way to play with others around them to help them get through levels that are super challenging. The only downside is it's too redundant and too tedious to get to that process, and I feel like you could have easily adjusted this to make the game a lot better. So for my overall rating, I'm giving this game a 9.5 out of 10. The minor flaws of this game are just that, they're minor. Does Elden Ring live up to the hype? Hell yes it does. This game brings an epic experience that gets you so addicted to just keep playing. You fall quite a lot, but you rise and keep fighting. And boy, do I love that premise. This game is a shining light in an era of modern gaming where everything is unfinished and broken. Elden Ring shows that making a complete game really does pay off. Is Elden Ring running away with the game of the year title? So far this year, Elden Ring is running away with the title However, there are some new opponents in the horizon that are going to make this very competitive. And I'm looking at you, God of War, and I'm looking at you, Starfield. Let's see how these games play out, and then we'll have another conversation. But in my opinion, this game is a must-buy and I really recommend it for any gamer out there. Thank you everyone for watching. That is my review of Elden Ring. Make sure if you haven't done so yet, please drop a thumbs up and subscribe for more future content. Please join us on social media on Twitter, Discord, and TikTok, and those are located in the description below. Until next time, this is Marsman Gaming, signing off. Peace.